Hello and welcome to another episode of the Big Money Stylist Podcast. You guys, I'm so excited to be here today, but more importantly, I'm so excited who's sitting in my living room with me right now. I'm so honored to have her. I honestly kind of feel like I've like secretly been stalking you and like kind of vibe with you and I was like, I'm just going to reach out. So you guys, we have Emily Ford here in my living room. We're really excited to have you here. So thank you for being here. I'm so honored to be here. Yeah. You're beautiful inside and out. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I've always, you know how you can like kind of read people's energy a little bit. I'm like, she's cool. And yeah. I like her shoes and her yeah. style and everything. <laughs> I was like, so we got to do this. But I, it's funny because I, I was telling you, I started this podcast like five years ago and I, um, I didn't know where it was going to go. I just felt like called to like, start talking, like literally start sharing, start mm -hmm. talking. And that's, I didn't realize the power in just like sharing your story. Right. And so it kind of evolved over the years. I primarily was, you know, talking to hairstylists cause that's how I built my brand. Yeah. And then just recently I'm like, I feel a bigger calling. And one of the things I love about you is like, you're talking about how like kind of like accepting that calling, finding that it factor in you. So, but I really want to go back and mm -hmm. start from the beginning because I was like, kind of like, you know, like I said, you feel like, you know, somebody from social yeah. media, but it's like everybody you see that has this amazing presence online. I always say, don't judge a book by the cover, but ask how they got there. That's right. And so that's why I wanted you on this show because even whether you're a hairstylist, a business owner, an entrepreneur, it gives people this sense of like hope. Mm. They're like, holy shit, she started there. Mm -hmm. Like, where can I go? So 10, 12 years ago, kind of like rock bottom for you, sleeping on a mattress, oh, like go God. back. <laughs> yeah, and it's so important that, and I love that you ask me all this because so often people, they see the big stages mm -hmm. and the this and the that, and I'm like, if you only knew where I right. was a decade ago, right. like if you only knew, and, and to your point of now feeling called to shift the show and lean into that, that curiosity is all I've ever done mm. is continuing to lean in and mm. go, okay, I'll do it. And if I don't like it, then I'll course correct and I'll pivot. Right. And it's just like, that's like the winner's mindset, but mm. hardly anybody does it because they're so afraid of looking stupid, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, but gosh, it was 2010. I was 23 mm. living in Minnesota. I was raised by a single mom, youngest of three, basically raised myself mm. Abusive live-in boyfriend, lived with us. My dad left when I was born. So I grew up so fast, mm. but I knew how to work hard because I watched my mom like mm -hmm. get up in the morning, have her to-do list and just like make Hustle. it all happen and somehow put us through volleyball camp, church camp mm. and all the things. And it wasn't until like, gosh, I was 19 and I'm like, what do I want to do with my life? And mm -hmm. I started working for a plastic surgeon in Minneapolis and I mm -hmm. learned everything working for this guy. Like, mm -hmm. how do you work with wealthy people and, you know, just things about beauty mm -hmm. and taking care of yourself. And, you know, I still wasn't making enough money to like really get by, honestly, because mm -hmm. it was so part When you're 19. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I nannied for boys mm -hmm. and I just was like searching. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was at the gym, I was in LA fitness and there was these women that were competing in mm -hmm. fitness. Okay. And I was so bored. Yeah. I was like, I needed a challenge and yeah. I didn't go to college. Okay. So I'm like, what, I need something to do. So like, we're going to do this fitness show. And mm. I'm like, okay, what is this? Like fitness America. I'm like, oh, it's like kind of like pageantry yeah. and it's cute. <laughs> and like, you could be like a Nike model. Yeah, and this yeah. is so amazing. So I dove in Oh wow! and, um, I actually, uh, do you know Lori Harder? Yeah. I just had her on the show. Okay. Yeah. So she was my neighbor. In okay. Minnesota. Oh, okay. Okay. So she like led us all through like posing and oh, all this funny. stuff. And I met this woman that she was personal training mm. and she was selling supplements. And I, okay. and, and I didn't know it was this thing called network marketing. Mm. I didn't even know what that was. Uh, but I was at this crossroads in my life where mm. I was just like getting into bad relationships mm. and what do I do? And so I saw her build this thing, build this company. Yeah. And I was like, is your company hiring and would they hire me? And she kind of like giggled a little bit. Little did I know it's like commission based yeah, yeah. only. Yeah. And she's like, if you're willing and I'm like, I'm willing, I'll do anything. <laughs> so I dove in mm. 
we moved in together in Minneapolis. Was this a, a network marketing company? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we moved in together. She was 33, I was 23. Mm. It was after the last um, mortgage crisis. Oh, okay. So yeah. basically, she worked with Chris Harder, mm -hmm. Lori's husband. Oh, okay. They both got their severance. They both got laid off. Everyone mm -hmm. was getting let go mm -hmm. in the mortgage industry. Yeah. And so we were all neighbors. It was like, okay, what are we going to do? Let's let's sell these health and wellness supplements. Yeah. Uh, but I dove in and slept on a mattress on the floor. Mm -hmm. I did not buy like anything new for two years. Mm. I uh, got personal development books. I like made myself a little vision board. Mm -hmm. She gave me her old desk. I unplugged the TV mm. and I was like, let's go, let's learn sales. Yeah. And that was the start yeah. of like what you see now was just going through the process of what it really takes to build a business from absolutely nothing. So you went from, so you were like top ranking in that company, right? Well, didn't I was you, the like, youngest millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you just like you hustled, put your head down, like made it happen. So from there, like when did you shift in to create like the brand that people see mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happened was I got in and I started to do sales and mm -hmm. I realized oh, why wouldn't I like build my brand online? I didn't even yeah. really know it was my brand, but I, what, mm. I, what I knew was everybody's spamming people mm. and no one cares mm -hmm. what you're selling. So I was like, how can I like build this unique? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can add value. And, and then I mm. realized something called the Kardashian principle. And I was like, people want to follow the journey. Like show yeah. me the behind the scenes. Right. Show me the, the, story. the real real. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, let me do that. Mm -hmm. And so I started to show people, okay, I'm now going to go into South Korea because I opened South Korea, that mm -hmm. market. And then I was like, I built in Europe. and But also like just the freaking boring, crappy yeah. parts of business. Mm -hmm. I would show them like, I'm in my car about to go into to this massage mm -hmm. place and give a presentation in the janitor's closet. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. not glam, right. but I let people in on both sides. Right see me on stage, but also see me, yeah. you know, going through it, right? Well, there's this authenticity to it, which then builds trust. Yeah. 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 So you kind of are almost like inside of this, you know, network marketing company, building your own personal yes. brand. Thank God. Yeah. By the grace of God. Yeah. I always tell people, I don't care what you do, mm -hmm. build your own brand. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, but back then people are like, no, do we you only do this, yeah. you know? And so what happened was I did very well. And then the world of network marketing was like, can you train me? Mm -hmm. Which is a huge mm -hmm. Huge. Because now you have your own like niche inside of that community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized like a lot of the older guys, I'm like, oh gosh, don't do it that way. It's so spammy, mm -hmm. clunky, mm -hmm. little gross. Yeah. You know, so I'm on stage at like the MGM training all them. And I mm -hmm. really realized that's my real passion. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I don't care what you do. I just want to help extract your mm -hmm. greatness and really curate it in a way that stands out. Mm -hmm. And so I naturally started to do that, mm -hmm. which led me into what I do today. Right. So now when did you um, kind of launch the, the fortitude thing? Like when did mm -hmm. that, I know you said you're kind of rebranding. So how did that kind of take shape? Like when did that start to evolve? Mm -hmm. Like how long have you had like your program you have right now? Yeah. Gosh, n nine months. Nine months. Yeah. So it's fairly new. But yeah. you, so when you started traveling and speaking, it was just kind of helping other like entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. getting asked to speak and things like that and train. Mm -hmm. I, and then you probably found like there's more like purpose for you inside of like this this training element. Like you said, helping people discover their it factor. How do you how do you do that? Like yeah. when you find somebody and you're like, OK, and they're like because I train a lot of hairstylists. And I'm like, your message, and even I, you'd probably be better at it than me, but I'm like, your message is not landing. Like, you just need to be you. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's it's one of those things that people have a hard time in, and I don't know if it's like self-worth, like they just, yeah. like, they're kind of stuck in these stories. So how do you, tell, talk to me about that. Like, how do you help mm. develop somebody to find that, you know, it factor in themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so good. You know, what I do when I work with people, it's almost like therapy, mm. okay? <laughs> For the first hour, it's like, tell me everything. Mm -hmm. I want to know, like, if we were to, like, go out tonight, where do you want to go? And why do you want to go mm. there? And what do you do? And what, what did you do 10 years ago? And what have you learned? So I do, like, a whole deep dive okay. on them 
to make them realize like how much wisdom that mm. they have. And I always share your most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. Mm. Okay. So who you were 10 years ago. Yeah. Let's pull all that out. Mm. And so I curate then content pillars that are very unique to them, mm -hmm. but make sense to also where they're going. Yeah. You know, so some of the lanes might have direct business correlation. Like if it's with hair, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that makes sense. But some of it should be wildly different. So somebody actually follows you mm -hmm. and then they end up buying from but, you yeah. down the road. And so I do that. But then I also future pace. Where do you want to be in three to five mm -hmm. years? So like one of the gals I just worked with, she's like, I do eventually want to speak, but I don't mm -hmm. know what I'm going to speak on. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, well, you've lost a hundred pounds. You do jazzercise. Mm. You're like a grandma and you're hot and sparkly and cute. Mm -hmm. you, you talk real. You have a lot of mm -hmm. business experience. And what I uncovered with this woman was you're a re you're reco recovering people pleaser. Like mm. you used to be way overweight because you wanted to appease everyone, mm -hmm. you know? So I dove in and she's like, I am mm. my family business. Like I completely, uh, derailed it because yeah. I people pleased. I oh, wanted wow. to appease my siblings and all this stuff. So I basically take <laughs> all of it and then curate a unique message that can be like their overarching theme. Because when someone comes to your page, you literally have like 30 10, seconds. Yeah. 30, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so that could be a keynote, that could be mm. a program, that can be content, all, yeah. all the above. I feel like everybody has this unique ability to like create their own personal brand. Cause I don't, I don't know about you. You don't seem introverted at all. Like I look at your page and I'm like, she's beautiful. She's very well-spoken. So talk to somebody who's <gasps> even like, I feel like even for me, like I've gotten, you know, obviously better over the years, but when I started my brand, it was like so sad. Like 12 years ago, I could barely like hold a conversation with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, how do you take somebody like that? Who's like, oh, I'm because I get this a lot from hair stylists. Like, I'm that's not me. Like, yeah. I'm introvert. I'm like, no, just share who you are. And mm -hmm. that's what people will fall in love with. Mm -hmm. How do you take somebody who like almost is like, that's not me and help them discover the real version of them? Does that yeah, make sense? so good. And I'm an outgoing introvert. Yeah. So like too much people I need to, ooh, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like I, I definitely need my alone time. But what I first of all do is I make the why big enough because mm. oftentimes it's like these excuses, right? Mm. I'm a mom, I'm busy with yeah. kids all day, this and that, yet they're like something's missing, yet I mm. want to build my brand, yet this and that. So it's like, yo, all day long I could make excuses, but then it's very much about me. And mm -hmm. I literally said to one of my clients, I'm like, you're being extremely selfish. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so getting them to realize it's about the other mm -hmm. people. So if you can't do it for you, do it for them. But right. let's exercise just like exercising our muscles. It's, you know, we're not going to get abs overnight, but day mm -hmm. by day. And so curating a plan that like works for mm -hmm. them. I think what happens is like paralysis by analysis. Like they're like, <gasps> like yeah. oh my God, where do I start? Yeah. This is too much. And it's consumer nation. So mm -hmm. they're like taking in all this stuff. They're looking at women like me and you that we've been doing this for a long time and so it's like starting out super small with a mm -hmm. plan they need mm -hmm. a plan otherwise they're gonna fail yeah you know um but the biggest thing is and i'm constantly taking assessments from people mm. it, even just like my whole following i'm like what scares you the most yeah. and it's what people think of them and mm. it's uh, there's this perfection thing mm -hmm. that that we all have yeah. you know and that that come, you know, I'm a spiritual woman. I'm a faith-based woman that comes from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's the spirit of mm -hmm. perfection. So I, I really take the spiritual approach as well to make them yeah. realize like it's bigger, it's bigger. Yeah. Like we actually need to focus on your faith yeah. because that's what's holding you captive. Right. And you know, I've even had people with huge messages, but they're like, I feel like there's like something around my yeah. neck. Like I'm unable to speak. And I'm mm. like, we have to break that, yeah, yeah. you know? And so that's where I'll, I'll take out, you know, some of my faith-based well, practices. I love that you're even saying like, it's like small action plans. Right. And then like, I love that you're like, you're being selfish. It's so crazy because there, I it was like forever ago, probably like, I don't know, like seven years ago. And I was like, I'm done with this hair thing. I'm whatever. And I remember literally like falling to the floor, like crying. And this like voice came over me and was like, you'd be selfish to stop. 
And I share that all the time. I'm like, it's not just about you. Like yeah. you have to be willing to get the reps in, to get uncomfortable because the person that you're going to become, but also this game is about impact and reach. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you're playing small, you're playing small. And mm -hmm. I'm, I think I love that you kind of hit on that because I think people, I'm like, who cares if you're scared? Like you just, you have to kind of tunnel yeah. vision and just go for it. Yeah. But it does, it takes, it takes this small action plans to, to get to the bigger picture. I'm like, don't compare yourself to the person who's got mm -hmm. a million more reps than you. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. So. And, and if you don't have the discipline, mm -hmm. you, you just will spiral out, yeah. you know? And even me, like mm -hmm. I tell people, I do not go on social until, you know, my day's plan, my morning routine's mm -hmm. done. Like I didn't go on, you know, it's 1.30 right now. I didn't go on until like 12.45, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I'm always sharing with people, it, you have to really, if you don't, if you want to take control mm -hmm. and that's a thing for you, which most people it is like, mm -hmm. you know, they get overwhelmed. I'm like, don't go on until you have a plan. Right. And it's like you either own it or it owns you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you know? Choose your path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so what is a, what is like a typical week look like for you? Like, oh. just like a, your, your schedule. Cause like I yeah. always, people think that I just have like this crazy mad schedule. I'm like, eh, yeah, I, mean, I got my commitments. Yeah. But I'm like, I really like, I genuinely believe in like creating balance for yourself. Otherwise you're just going to implode. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. t walk us through like, what is, what does a week look like for you? Yeah. You know, it depends on what season it is mm. and what I'm building and what I'm getting ready to do. Mm. Cause I do keynote speak now and I have like two different talks that I'm giving okay. with, I have like a manager and all that stuff. So sometimes it's like corporate talks yeah. and whatever, but I completely believe in having this peaceful purpose-driven life mm -hmm. where back in the day I was so manic mm -hmm. and inflamed. Like you could see it in my body. Mm -hmm. I was stressed mm -hmm. and I'm like, what the frick was I doing? Yeah. It's like, I just didn't know better. And so I have really learned the discipline pursuit of less, mm. <laughs> you know, because yeah. the quiet time and like the walking, you know, along the water where we both live, mm -hmm. it's like, that's where I get all my downloads yeah. and ideas and all that stuff. And so a typical week for me is like morning is everything mm. like my morning routine yeah. um i theme my days mm. because energetically if i know okay you're gonna do interviews all day i can stay in that frame but if i'm in the frame of you know there's like one day a week where i do my coaching mm. and consulting it's right. like then i'm all coach mode i'm in coach mode mm -hmm. and then there's a day where it's like i'm in creation mode or i'm right right now i'm writing two books mm. so i'm like it's that's so deep, you know, yeah, it's, like it's, it's and a creative. different brain. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then Thursdays typically for me, I try to keep completely off mm. and whatever organically happens, happens. That's good. So if like a girlfriend wants to go to lunch or mm -hmm. I just want to go to the mall or get lost or yeah. want, want <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get lost in the shoe section, <laughs> you know, just like, yeah. just get lost or like, you know, um, go to the spa mm -hmm. or just random. Or if I feel yeah. like working, I will, I right. just want no pressure on no, a no plans on a Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And then Friday I'll work like half the day, date night, always, mm. you know, and I know mm. you guys do that as well. Like keep that yeah. going. Um, so it really just depends, but theming my days yeah, I love that. have changed my life. It's funny that you say theming it. Cause I, I, I guess I do the same thing, but I never thought to call it theming it. I'm like, you know, you gotta have a purpose to your day. And then you have one day where you have no purpose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you go get lost or exactly. whatever, whatever you want to do, but yeah, but I love it. Okay. So I want to talk to you about your husband, you just got married six, no, when did you get married? In November? November. Yeah, so you're pretty yeah. fresh. You're yeah. freshly new to the game. So t I really feel like this is one of the messages that my hairdressers kind of struggle with. And I really want to talk to you about this. But like, I feel like when you're like this business owner and this boss, you've got to learn to be the boss and you've got to learn to be the feminine. And I think a lot of women struggle with that. And I'm like, because I coach a lot of the hairstyles, I'm like, let your man be the man, you mm -hmm. know? So tell me, I mean, I know you're freshly married, but like, yeah. talk to me, like, how do you decipher the roles? Like what has helped you in your relationship being yeah. this powerful woman that people see today? Yeah, this is so important. It, yeah. It's and like, this is like the DMs I get probably mm, the most. Okay. They're like, how are you crushing it? But so feminine. Yeah. And I'm like, I've had to learn this. Cause you remember mm -hmm. my dad left me when I was born. Mm. Uh, the only other relationship I was in, I was like 
the husband, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> truly, yeah. I've never had a healthy masculine. Mm. So when I met Jake, I tested him all the time. Mm. Like he was like, I knew you were testing me to see if I was the pillar. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, and so I had to consciously make a decision to let go and mm-hmm. let him lead Yeah, and would catch myself. Even today, I catch my little power Mm-hmm. you know, chick mm-hmm. come up. And so I'm constantly oscillating between the both. We, mm-hmm. we are, we're business women, right. but I do things that make me more feminine. Mm-hmm. This is why I'm on the whole peaceful kick. And this is mm-hmm. my new era. And I don't think I'll ever leave it mm-hmm. because when I was hyper busy, hyper all the time, mm-hmm. manic, I was so masculine. Yeah. You could see it in my jaw. Yeah. You could see it. You every, see the features, yeah. yeah. So like, last night and this is like all the time I do the hot tub at night like as soon as it's evening Mm. there's either jazz music playing Mm. like I turn into like more of like a sexy like doty housewife yeah yeah. (laughs) I'll light the candles I'll go in the hot tub and he can either join or watch or whatever but I am doing that so I can just like my nervous system Mm. shifts I whip out a book. I start journaling. I have to switch those moves right. consciously, mm-hmm. right? And so even my workouts are a lot more feminine. I mm-hmm. use weights, but it's Pilates moves, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I'm consciously shifting to that. And yeah. even in my uh, spiritual practice, it makes me more feminine because mm-hmm. I'm praying and all that stuff. And, you know, again, it's it's a day-by-day thing. Yeah. But I will tell you working, like we work alongside of each other. So like my office, his office, yeah. we have brought in like a separator, <laughs> like yeah, a yeah, person, yeah. like yeah. a physical wall. <laughs> yeah. But also we learn to keep that polarity. Mm-hmm. We need somebody to do the, the inner work, the minutia type mm-hmm. stuff. Because otherwise I'm like, hey, did you do, did you follow up with this? Did you do that? And that's not sexy. Yeah. It's just all work. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I go into boss mode. Mm -hmm, And so mm -hmm. I learned to bring in new team Mm. that they can take that. So that way I can keep that. It's like your, your barrier. Yeah. It's like your sounding board almost Mm -hmm. like you're like, can you go tell my husband this? Even though he's like one room over. Yeah. That's so, I love that you're like even saying that because it's so funny. Garrett and I, we work together. He's helped me a lot with my, my hair business and he'll be like, I don't like your tone. And I'm like, I'm in, I'm in boss mode. Like, right. you know, so we, Garrett and I have found like, we don't work well together. So that's, but I've also noticed, like you said, like when you're a business owner, like part of you, that masculine role, like you have to be in that space to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, that's how it is. But then mm-hmm. you like come home and you're like, wait, I need to literally like shift gears. But what I have found and I feel like it's something that I've always wanted. I'm like, I want to be feminine. Me too. Like I, like I can be a boss, but yeah. like, don't, I, I want to be in that space. And I love that you're saying you have to make it a conscious effort. You mm-hmm. do. You literally have to like mm-hmm. unplug, sit in the jacuzzi, whatever mm-hmm. it is for me. I turn on music and dance while yeah. I'm cooking. <laughs> yeah, cute. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's like, you've got to find like these little things and make a conscious effort. Cause I find through, like even through Garrett's um, Wake Up Warrior, there's so many women that I just feel like they harden. Even if they're not like working women, they're just like in mom mode 24 seven. They just kind Mm -hmm. of harden and they forget to date. Mm -hmm. Like I always tell people, I'm like, that's why Garrett and I started our podcast, Date Your Wife. Cause like essentially, even though you're married, you still kind of have to be flirty and doty and like date a little bit. Yeah. So, so good. It's it's really so important and it's exhausting mm. to be in your masculine. Yeah. I like see women, I'm like, aren't you exhausted? Yeah. You know, and now that I've, changed mm-hmm. and grown I almost see like women fully in their masculine and I'm like aren't you tired yeah what are you trying to prove yeah it's it's I think it's a level of control uh-huh. like oh for sure it and is. it's like I for a long time felt like I was in competition with my husband and then I was like I was like years back I was like I'm tired I don't yeah. want to be in competition right. anymore you know right and it's like you said like just like letting go and I was like Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So when when people reach out to you and, you know, ask you about that specific question, they're like, I'm struggling with this. You just kind of give them like little tips here and there. To, like, yeah. A lot of them are in their, they're single mm-hmm. and they're, they're like us. They're mm-hmm. get it done chicks, mm-hmm. but they cannot seem to attract the right guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what my husband told me, he's like, honestly, I 
probably wouldn't have been so attracted to you if it's, you were masculine yeah he's mm-hmm. like you know because it's like scary to mm-hmm. men and even if the man is so strong they don't want that mm-hmm. you know so I'm like okay lighten up a little mm-hmm. you know just sharing those things because you don't need to prove anything did you feel like you were already in that space when you met Jake like was, were you kind of like already like in that for like trying to bring out more of your feminine or was it something when you met him, it kind of like transitioned when I met him, mm. it's like he, he knew. And it's so hilarious because he, he was in his Tony moment going to Tony oh, Robbins, yeah. all that he loves Tony. Yeah. We both do, yeah. but he had just gone to date with destiny mm. and that's where they talk about all that. Mm-hmm. So he knew like straight up, like, okay, yeah. And he was like studying me, you know, Mm -hmm. he's like, I get it. You didn't have a dad. Mm -hmm. You've never had a healthy man in your life. Yeah. And it was, I was like, I was like a freaking project for you. And he's like, he's like, yeah, but I I could just unravel you so quick. And then that's who you, that's who you really were meant to be, Mm -hmm. Emily. You just never had the space to be who you really were meant to Mm be. So it's almost like an element of like, you felt safe with him. 100%. 100%. And he's like, let me prove that I'm like safe. Mm-hmm. And I think for, for women, when we feel that, even if we're successful women, we still want to feel safe and secure. 100%. And so I always tell, I always tell my, um, my hair size, I'm like, just let your man be the man, do the thing, but you have to also be like the feminine mm-hmm. and notice that there's like a balance there. Mm-hmm. So I love that you're sharing that. Yeah. So what, when, when you started your, your fortitude program, like Cause I have a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs that listen to this and they're like, I don't know how to start or where to start. And mm-hmm. I always tell people, I'm like, sometimes you just have to be willing to go and things will unfold. Yeah. And you said it earlier, you're like, yeah, that didn't work. This didn't work. And one uh. of the things I love that you said is you're like, I just am like questioning things. I'm like questioning, does, is this going to work? Like question. And, and that's what I always tell people. I'm like, why don't you just entertain the possibility? There's so much power in just being like questioning. Mm-hmm. Can I do this? Mm-hmm. And like you said, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. So how did you like when things share with like maybe something didn't work? Mm-hmm. And then how do you recover? And you're like, well, that didn't work. And, but you're not totally squashed. You know, you're yeah. like, okay, let's switch gears. And, yeah. and where do you go? You know, life is all about trying. Mm. And you know, just going like, do I, do I even like this? Do Mm -hmm. I like one-on-one? Do I like group coaching? Mm -hmm. Do I, what makes sense? And it's all about trying new things and also listening Mm -hmm. to what people are asking for. Mm -hmm. So for me with like fortitude mentorship, I noticed there's a huge group of people that they don't have the funds to do Mm -hmm. like a mastermind and things like that, but they just need a little bit, like a little bit Mm -hmm. here or there. And I'm like, I can serve that girl, Mm -hmm. you know? So let me put together a program that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now there's also times where I've tried things and I'm like, like I did try doing more coaching. I'm like, Oh gosh, no, it Mm -hmm. has to be like, we're working on a project. I'm going to do a before and after situation. Like, there's certain things where I'm like, I could not be on coaching calls all mm. day. That's just not in me. Mm-hmm. I'm a creator. Mm-hmm. I need to be like speaking or doing something in that zone. And so right. the only way you know is if you try, try. you know? And so things unravel mm-hmm. as you go, for mm-hmm. sure. Like even now with this whole new company I'm getting ready to launch mm-hmm. to Fortify My Brand, it's mm. like, I've got my sweet spot. Like Mm. I know that I need to take people one-on-one that are ready Mm -hmm. to completely shift their brand. Like Mm -hmm. let's take and make it, you know, um, Vogue, you know, but it's a personal brand Mm. and make it stand out Mm -hmm. and not be so spammy and gross. And, you know, so like, I know though how to take someone on that journey. They fly here. I do the whole kit Mm. and caboodle my, and then I have a team that does all the other things that I don't know how to do, or Mm. I'm not great at. So again, how did I know to do that through trial and Mm -hmm. error? I took one person and I said, Hey, I want to try something. Mm. I literally took this girl and I was like, just like a one-on-one. Yeah. Okay. I go, I want to do this would you be open and mm-hmm. would you be my guinea pig? Yeah. And she's like, of course, like, mm. let's do it. And then we did it. And I'm like, okay, this works. Yeah. You know? So before I launch, mm-hmm. so it's like before you launch, launch, right. You have like a soft launch. Yeah. <laughs> Just go into like Trial. a little beta, Yeah, you know, and, yeah, I love that. and see what works. Right. And, and, and I just, it's like, if anyone's listening to this right now, like, oh my gosh, like I just need to try and do the thing. Mm. Yeah, you do. And it doesn't need to be grandiose. Right. Like it didn't start off this huge, massive thing. It started right. off with one person, five people, and right. then it compounds. So are you doing, I know you have like your, your bigger coaching. 
Mm-hmm. And I, isn't that like, it's like 97 a month or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. And that's the one that you said, you know, you feel called to that group and they have something, you know, don't, don't you do like four calls and like a, yeah. t- tell me about that program. Yeah. So spot on 97 yeah. bucks a month. I do one master class. Okay. And so that's usually two and a half, three hours mm-hmm. on like content strategy okay. or speaking or mm. it's something in that so you have a realm. different topic each yep. month. and then i do one faith call mm. once a month completely optional mm-hmm. i have a lot of people that are just like curious mm-hmm. so they just jump on mm. um last month was all about the spirit of perfection so that oh, cool. was like people are bawling and then i i message them monday through friday mm. so just kicking them in the butt yeah and then it's moving. a community and i always want people to like share what they do and co-labor and mm. do business together and exchange yeah. and all that stuff. There's, so there's so much power in a community. You know, it's, I, I feel like people, they want a trainer. I'm like, that's great. But the community is you're going to build this like connection, this mm-hmm. bond, mm-hmm. and you're going to be excited to get on these calls or whatever it is because yeah. you have this powerful c- community. Yeah. What have you seen, you know, building what you have, like, how do you feel like the community is so important with your coaching program? It's everything. Culture is absolutely mm-hmm. everything. Cause you're, you're right. People mm-hmm. stick in for each other. Yeah. And then like they go meet up in different mm-hmm. places and all that. I think it's so important to be like, Oh gosh, there's a woman just like me. Yeah. Like she's here too. She's at the same spot mm-hmm. and it's everything. It's that energy of people just wanting to get better. And however you lead it is mm-hmm. how it's going to be. And for me, like, I'm like, ladies, take your eyelashes off. Mm. Like, let's go yeah. put it all on the line. That's the yeah. only way we're going to heal from our trauma. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a beautiful place where people can really unravel feel safe. and feel so safe. Mm. I, yeah. I love, I love that. I mean, I have like my hair Academy, but I love the community because like you said, you find like other women, like cheerleading each other on supporting, even like coaching, same experiences. Cause we have only had so many experiences and somebody else's experiences might impact another person. Mm-hmm. So I find there's like a lot of power and community, but what, what st- stood out with me with you is like, you were like, I felt like I was a leader. And I think that so many times don't people don't want to accept this calling of being a leader. Straight. Touch on that because like Straight. that's something I'm passionate about too. Oh I'm like, gosh. you feel unqualified, you, but you feel called to lead. Yeah. You know? Oh, but. you just gave me the chills. Mm. You like, that's a, that's a mandate. Like mm-hmm. when you have the gift of leadership or mm-hmm. you feel it a little bit, it's like your calling is calling yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And by you like going, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's like an insult to God. Mm-hmm. He gave you those attributes. He gave you the gift of leadership. Right. So you need to exercise it. And nobody is great at it at first. Yeah. It's like, let's explore what this even means. Right. But if anybody's oh, listening right now, oh, I love you. If anyone's <laughs> listening right now and feels that it's like, you have to exercise yeah. that gift. Well, you know? I, I love that. I mean, that really stuck out to me when I was just like kind of reading about you because I, I feel like so many people are called to lead, but they're like, no, I can't do it because of this, this, and this. And I'm like, leadership doesn't necessarily mean you're like leading hundreds of thousands. Maybe mm-hmm. it does. Maybe yeah. you're leading a small community. Maybe you're leading a salon. Maybe you're leading yeah. a team. But I do agree with you. Like, it's one of those things, like, if you ignore that calling, it's like a slap in the mm-hmm. face. You're like, no, mm-hmm. you don't understand who you're going to impact. Yeah. And it's almost like, for me, like, even, like, when I think about, like, expanding my brand anymore, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to do it. It's not me. I'm not going to do it. But it's like it, that knock just, yeah. just keeps coming. And yeah. you're like, and I always tell people, I'm like, if you finally, like, say yes if you finally like answer the door that knock you finally are like god opens up like mm-hmm. a path he opens up opportunities oh a hundred percent talk about the power and like accepting that calling yeah. of you know whatever it is so so much of what i'm doing right now i have this whole keynote called never be shaken mm. and it is all about generational transference it's mm. all about i take them through questions what happened to you before the age of 18 mm. i'm in these corporate settings i was speaking at a real estate conference in vegas and like half the room had been like sexually abused mm. never felt safe tra- wow. trauma okay and this whole talk for me came real because i walked through it mm. I healed from stuff that happened to me as a little girl Mm. that I didn't do to myself, Mm -hmm. but I knew if I want to ever allow love in and let my husband love me, Mm. I need to heal from what happened to me as a little girl. Mm. And I, when I went through this process, I was like, 
how many people are withholding love? Yeah. So everything I'm doing now, mm. a lot of it is about generational transference. Right. Like the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. Why we act the way we, we mm. do. Patterns. Yeah, mm -hmm. patterns, what our parents did, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, and what all that means. All of that, like at first when I was like, I should talk about this. Mm -hmm. There, half of my brain was like, no, are mm. you kidding me? Like, you're going to go out there and mm -hmm. t like show all your, your battle wounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause to get them to open up, yeah, I open up first. To. It's just how it works. And I'm like, ah, but then when I'd like go to bed at night, it's like, I, it wouldn't leave me. Mm -hmm. I'd go on a walk. It wouldn't leave me. And it's like, that's the spirit telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I am walking in my obedience going, okay, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Mm. It's like loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So when you finally listen to right. him and you do it, I feel like what happens is things open up yeah. because he's like, oh, I can trust you now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's not for you, but it's for people. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I can trust you go. Yeah. And that's exactly what's been happening in my life the mm. last 12 months. Mm. I've just been going, okay, really? Okay. All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, okay, now I can trust you. Yeah. And so really that's what it's about is it's walking in that obedience mm -hmm. where we just want to walk in sometimes the things we want to do. Yeah. I just want to watch movies tonight. Mm -hmm. I just want to Netflix and chill. Mm -hmm. I just want to go with a normal group of women that just go complain about their husbands every happy hour and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what your flesh wants. Right. But what does your heart want? Mm -hmm. What does God want for mm -hmm. you? And that's like, it's weird at first, but mm -hmm. once you lean into that, I feel like that's like the supercharged life. Yeah, I do. I feel it's like the fast lane. Because you're like, okay. I And I love that you're sharing that because there's been so many times I'm like, this is really uncomfortable. I don't yeah. want to do this. And then I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? You know, like it's like a, almost like a surrender button. But also like I feel when when you hit that moment, it's like God speaks through you to, like to other people. And that's when it's like all of a sudden you're like, wow, the cards are just like really lining up. But it's like your obedience and your listening. Mm -hmm. So I think that so many people need to like understand that we all have the capacity and power to do this. And it might not always be your perfect plan or your mm -hmm. checklist or whatever it is. Yeah. But you have to be willing to, to do that. And mm -hmm. I love that you were sharing like, I feel like how we were raised has such, it's like you almost have to rewire your brain. And even today, I'll be like, I'm not a 12 year old Danielle anymore, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's so and when those come up, I have to remind myself. And you said this to you're like, this is your flesh. I have to remind myself, well, you're human and you went through that and you have those memories, but that's not who you are today. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important to not fall back into like this, this, you know, narrative or this old wiring. How did you overcome, you know, sounds like you had kind of some dark moments, you know, as a yeah. child. Yeah. And how did you rewire your brain? Mm -hmm. where you're like, I'm not, I have to, you know, move on from these stories. Like, mm -hmm. how did you, how did you do that? Yeah. I think there's different levels, different layers, different times. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the last time, like the true healing for me, cause I had a lot of shame, mm. so much shame. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't even like comfortable with like right. sex, like mm. weird, mm -hmm. but not weird if some people can probably relate to this mm -hmm. like and i realized it was the passing down of the beliefs the behaviors and values like that's generational transference mm -hmm. and so for me if i looked at my family tree it was like oh most people are divorced there's like a handful of alcoholics mm -hmm. poverty's like the real thing mm -hmm. and so just really looking at like what am i dealing with here mm -hmm. okay okay i i do not want to be like this right so it's almost like awareness is key. Mm -hmm. And then how am I going to counter that? Mm. You know, uh, what I fill my mind with, what I fill my days with. And mm -hmm. so a lot of it's like not being close to past family, mm. you know, not spending that time mm -hmm. with certain people, but then taking it to, you know, for me, it's, it's God and, mm -hmm. and healing and having true healing power mm. in that relationship with God has really set me free in so many ways. Mm. Like it's given me confidence mm -hmm. because I, even though I didn't have a dad, I'm like, oh, I have a heavenly father mm -hmm. and I don't have to earn mm -hmm. anything. Right. So through understanding and like getting closer to him, that's what's allowed me to like truly heal mm -hmm. for sure. But then also recognizing patterns. Yeah. It's like, 
oh, I'm not healed here yet. Cause yeah, here yeah. comes a trigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought we were cool, but we're not, yeah. you know, I'm like, dang. So it's just, it's being aware and humbling yourself. Mm-hmm. Like nobody has ever arrived. It's yeah. like going, oh shoot. Okay. Yep. And, and, and like, a, like I'll apologize to my husband. I'm like, okay. Yep. You mm-hmm. know, and just moving on faster from it. So it's like a mix of like therapy, mm. church, all of it. Yeah. And just continually getting better. But the awareness thing is key. Mm-hmm. Most people are not willing to admit areas where they're still so, like you know, closed off. Yeah. Good. Well, and it's, it's crazy how you said it's like these patterns, right? You can choose to do something different, but you actually have to make a daily conscious effort to change that. Mm-hmm. Just because you made the decision doesn't mean like you wake up tomorrow and you're like, I'm over all this past trauma. Yeah. You know, and, and it's crazy. Cause I mean, I grew up, um, Mormon in Utah. Yeah. So I feel like I was in this really tiny, tiny box. And even like you said, like sex was really weird for me when I was yeah. married for like the first 10 years. It wasn't until we were married 10 years. I'm like, this shouldn't be this weird and awkward. Yeah. Like, but I had to make a daily like or a conscious effort to like be more sexy and feminine and not be weird about it. And I think too, a lot of women operate in the space of guilt. And mm-hmm. I'm always like, oh, when I feel like guilt is kind of like running my life, I'm like, that's mm-hmm. like, that's dark. Like we mm-hmm. need to kind of, Oh, it's such like, a dark spirit. Yeah, You've, it's just like, yeah. you don't, it's almost like it can run you to the ground. So I always tell people like guilt's like a friendly reminder of like, whoa, maybe you like took too far over here or there, but like, let's reel it back mm-hmm. in. What would you give advice to women who are trying to overcome like past traumas? Like, do you recommend like coaching or like, mm-hmm. it sounds like you sound similar to me. Like I feel like life experience helped me like heal myself a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what advice would you give women that are like, Hey, like I want to come out of my shell. I want to heal from this past trauma. Like mm-hmm. what would you recommend for them? Mm-hmm. I walk people through almost like a deliverance mm. for sure. Um, all the time mm. and countering it with the living word of God. It's like, if, if you read the Bible, it's like, this is the truth mm-hmm. and you're believing a lie mm-hmm. about yourself. I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. I'm this, I'm that. It's like, so you're coming into agreement with a lie mm-hmm. and that is getting embedded into your subconscious. Mm-hmm. So I counter it with the truth mm-hmm. and then I walk people through like basically coming into agreement with the truth. So that's mm. that's part of it daily. Mm-hmm. We walk them through that. But then it's it's a bunch of different things, mm. right? It's like kind of depending on where they're where they're, where they're starting and how deep how yeah, deep how and dark. dark they've gone, yeah. you know, the things they've done and all all that stuff. And yeah. so um, you know, I I put environment is everything. Mm-hmm. Cuz I'm like if you continue to be with people that are unhealed, yeah. you're going to continue You're going to believe that narrative to be that. And mm-hmm. so putting them in the environment, getting them in a in a good plan that feels right for them in this mm-hmm. season of their life, therapy is so needed mm-hmm. for sure, talking through it. Mm-hmm. Um I'd say like those are the basic things. Yeah. I think it's like important to have a coach, accountability, communication, like all of the things but I love that you said you sometimes you have to kind of remove yourself from environments and people that are no longer serving you. And that can be extremely scary because especially like if that's your culture and that's how you're raised, you feel like you're like, screw you guys. But in a way, like you have to get out of that environment to, and I always say it's like it's not just like get out of the environment for you but like who you're like going to become and who you're going to impact mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I love I love hearing everybody's story and I I've I've always kind of felt like a little bit connected to you but like you're like speaking my language so do you how were you raised like I mean I was raised Mormon were you raised just like Christian or like Catholic. Did you were <laughs> but it was so dysfunctional mm-hmm. right it was like my mom was like one of seven on the mm. farm wow. and she could only marry my dad because my dad was Catholic. Oh, wow. And then she was in love with like another man, but he was like Lutheran, so she couldn't marry him. Mm. And then, you know, just like weird, yeah, right? Yeah. And so it was like rules and it's like stand up, yeah. sit down. I'm right. like, fight, fight, fight. Like, yeah. I would like go to the, and I would go to confession in this like dark booth and I'd be so scared. I was like a little rebel. Yeah. I, would, I was like a wild, I didn't know what to do. So it wasn't until I went to like a non-denominational mm. Baptist, mm-hmm. you know, I think it was like Baptist, I don't even know. It wasn't Baptist, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like, Oh, it's like God. And you Mm. can just have a relationship and he loves me no matter what. And I was like, yeah, this is like so cool. And you know, so that's where it started for me, Mm. but like just full transparency. Sometimes I would be 
in like some of the Christian like circle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I belong here. Mm. Like, first of all, I don't dress like that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But I was just like, I, I, I'm you like, feel fit, like you fit in. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so I kind of had to find my way. And then when I moved to LA, mm. I found Mosaic, which is a really cool church mm. um, that like, it's in the heart of Hollywood and yeah. it's just cool. Right. Mm. Like Jerry Lorenzo fear of God, like mm. he'll roll up there. And I was like, Oh, this is so cool. It's like created. Mm -hmm. Like these people are like, I don't feel like they're judging me. And mm. I don't feel like the women are looking at me weird. Yeah, it's and different. yeah, I was like, and my friend was like, this is like how it's supposed to be. Emily. Mm -hmm. you were just in the wrong little subculture. Group, yeah. And mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, mm -hmm. you know, and that's when it's like, I, I just I just had to feel like accepted. Yeah, and I think I was in the wrong little group. And, yeah, it's and, like you got to find your tribe. Yeah. yeah. So you started. You were kind. You were raised um, Catholic. I was mm -hmm. <laughs> always joking around with Garrett. I'm like Catholic and Mormons. Like they're like they're so by the book. You know, straight just, up. Just yeah. like to to yeah. like get out of that culture is like yeah. it's it's wild. But so you really like kind of found God, and you just were like, okay, like what is it impresses me about you is that you just are like you're full force, like not afraid to talk about it. Like yeah, there's a lot of, no. Garrett does the same thing too. Yeah. And there's a lot of business owners that are scared to like, you know, say mm -hmm. God and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, I'm like, every, I don't care if you call it, call it God or whatever it is, but I believe that everybody has this ability to tap into this like higher source. Like you can't think that we're just, you know, here to be human. Yeah. So what made you feel like you wanted to almost have these like faith-based calls and yeah. like start talking about it? That's so Because a lot of business people don't. They're like, oh, that's off brand for me. Right. You know, for me, I move with conviction in mm -hmm. everything I do. If I don't believe, I cannot fake the funk. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the girl where you're like, notify your face, Emily. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I just, I have to, there's like a, there's a frequency to that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so... For me, like when I was set free and, and just f felt healed and even like before I go on stage, mm. again, it's like I just ask God take over. Mm. I know kind of like the road Ephraim, map, yeah. but that's it, mm -hmm. you know? And so when I had that encounter, I'm like, I, I cannot not tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Like I can't. Yeah. And so I just, I ha it's natural for you. It's integrity for mm -hmm. me, you know? And so when people ask me all these business things mm -hmm. and they're like, how are you this? And how are you so confident? And I'm like, cause I know who made me mm -hmm. and I know that there's not anybody else like me mm -hmm. and I'm not going to make an insult to our creator. And I also know that this person's dealing with crazy trauma mm -hmm. that Satan is like got a hold of them mm -hmm. and I know what can happen. So like, right. so it's like, I can't, I just can't yeah, shut it's, up. It's you, so yeah. I have to be mm. real, like keep mm -hmm. it real all the time. And I always tell, I'm like, people don't like me. Just move on crouton. I'm like, keep moving, yeah, yeah. keep on moving, you know? And so it's like, <laughs> I just, that, I just feel like that integrity of just keeping it real. Yeah. But then also knowing, like I was on a call this morning with a speaking agent and they're mm -hmm. like, Hey, if you go into this environment, um, can you still shift the souls, but not go full gospel? Mm, and I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I'm like, it's funny. Yes. Yeah. I, of course. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I won't say those things, but I'm but just, I'll be in that space. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's just funny. so funny. Cause I yeah. get it. And I got, you got to respect where you're at, but also mm -hmm. at the same time, like I'm an entrepreneur yeah. building my own thing. I'm your own personal platform. Yeah. And if it's you, it's like, yeah. it's like share and, and go with it. I think that that's kind of what's missing in the marketplace is people are, are so worried about what people think, but also they're missing the mark of just like being authentically you is what actually gravitates people towards you. And so it's like, just be you. No one else can be you. And I think the more that people exercise that, there this develops this like level of certainty. Yeah. And you're like, Emily's so cool. I'm like, yeah, because she's like authentically just being her. Mm -hmm. And people are uncomfortable just being them. I know. It's crazy. And, and when you're more you, it subconsciously gives another person permission mm -hmm. to be more of them. Right. And it's just like, that's, that is real freedom. Yeah. And it's like, everyone's masquerading and it's like calculated all mm -hmm. this. And I'm like, that energy is so bad. Yeah. 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 You know, I think now too, with like so much AI and all, so much information, I keep telling all my, my stylists and all my girls, I'm like, you guys like get out of your head. I'm like, just like, if you're doing something stupid, get on and talk about it. Like mm -hmm. whatever you're passionate about, mm -hmm. like share that. 
and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're willing to go, that's literally when you're kind of led the direction that you're supposed to be going Mm -hmm. and impacting the people you're supposed to be. Yeah. The other day I was so tired and I was like laying on my closet room floor, Mm -hmm. no makeup. I looked homeless, you know, (laughs) and, and I just was sharing like, this is the real, real. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you see me glitz and glam and mm-hmm. having so much fun at the, and I go, but no, today was like 900 calls. Mm-hmm. Some I was like, is this even going anywhere? Like cue the Oscar music. You know what I mean? Like I was just yeah. like, this, this is the real, I go, I'm like drained right now, whatever. And the amount of messages that were like, thank you, thank mm-hmm. you, thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you think I do? Just parade around all day, yeah, yeah. you know, but that's what people want to see. They mm-hmm. want to see like the mom juggling the stuff and mm-hmm. then still getting her, her real done. And, yeah, yeah. you know, like, or the insecurity, like, mm-hmm. oh, you still have insecurity and look at the huge company you've built mm-hmm. and all the things like, or you go on stage and yeah. win first place and all the, you know, it's like, they want to see that, right. you know? And it's like, don't be afraid. Yeah. I, it's funny. Cause like, I feel like I, uh, I, I needed to be better at that. Like on social media, I'm like, no, I'm just going to show the makeup and all the filters. And then, but when I talk to people, I feel like I'm like, pretty real yeah and so it's like I that's like something I need to be better I'm like I need to be face down in the closet and with kids slobber all over me and whatever else is on me (laughs) because it's there there is this balance of like there's this piece of you that is very polished that is this powerful woman the Mm -hmm. speaker and this things but also we're human and some days are a shit show and you're like I want to sit on the floor in my closet and cry but it's like share that with people and then it's like oh I don't have to be perfect like not there's no such thing Mm -hmm. as being perfect so I think it's you know there's I was in a meeting and that we were talking about some pretty big prolific thought leaders of mm. our time. And I was sharing with the whole board. I was like, I wish I could do their personal brand mm. because it's so polished yeah. and boring. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all I see is talking head reels. Yeah. I'm like, if they would just show other things right. and like some contrast, mm-hmm. they would really resonate with, especially the millennials and younger. Mm. I go, but like, it's just, it's so boring. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I know exactly what's going to happen. And mm. it could be a profound thing that they have to say. Yeah. But I'm like, nobody cares. Like, show me like your basement for a minute mm-hmm. or show me like, you know, even just like you on the plane and who you're with mm-hmm. and well, they don't want to show that. And I'm like, yeah, they have an aspirational lifestyle. Like yeah. it's not like they're pumping their, t- like I just, and I'm like, you're missing the point. This yeah. is why their brand is not growing. Well, and even I find I, Garrett and I were having this conversation the other day where like people that get like uber successful, they almost retract. And you're like, no, I just want to see what's going on. They like, dumb themselves. Down. Yeah, you're like, no, yeah. like you're like, you don't. You went from wearing your cute red bottoms, and now you're in your sneakers. Not that I'm against sneakers, yeah. but it's almost like they literally kind of contract. And I'm like, just because you're uber successful or uber wealthy, like I still want to. There's another level to everything. Yeah, and it's like I want to see more of that so I think it's so important like and now I want you to like come look at my brand and be like Kate tell me what should I, what should yeah. I do what should I well there's there's and, and I always want to tell people like seriously you just saw I shifted in the last nine months it's because mm-hmm. I am transforming constantly mm-hmm. yeah and like a, a, a brand transformation is one of the best marketing strategies anybody could ever keeps go them through. relevant keeps you relevant mm-hmm. it keeps like yeah. it's like you I trust you more you grew yeah you learned this in the last nine months of mm-hmm. your life and now you're gonna share it yeah there's just like this level of you there's a resonance to it because mm-hmm. there's so much depth and truth to it right right and so and again sometimes I see things things with people that I'm like, oh my gosh, can we just pull that out? Mm. You know, like, mm-hmm. can you do that more? Cause that is what's going to really resonate with people yeah. today. Why did you um, choose to kind of shift gears with your brand recently from the it factor to you're not, you're not, so you're not calling your podcast that anymore. No, it's the fortitude. Now show. it's the fortitude. So what made yeah. you kind of like n- shift gears there? Mm-hmm. Cause I shifted my brand mm-hmm. and it's all about brand recognition. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm Emily Ford. Mm-hmm. I'm launching my new company, fortify my brand. Mm-hmm. I have fortitude mentorship, fortitude show. And then I'm launching a book, never be shaken, mm-hmm. which is all about fortitude. Okay. So it's like it's a, ha- having yeah. it all under one house. Right. It makes more sense. Yeah. 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 I love that. I, it's funny. Cause I, 
I started like one brand and then it's like evolved and then it like almost gets confusing to the marketplace. <laughs> right. Well, that's what was happening mm-hmm. for me. It was like, oh gosh, I have this and that and all the things and you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Well, I love it. I, I really appreciate you being on the show today. Yeah. And I think, I just think you're, I could tell you're beautiful inside and Thank outside, you. but tell us one last thing. This is a really important question, but what are some of your hobbies that you love doing? Like oh my God. what's something somebody might not know about you? Dang, hobbies. I mean, I do love to get lost and, and like, <laughs> and to go, to, to go like to an art museum or a shopping mall mm. and not just to like buy things, just to, yeah. I like to see art. Mm. I like to see like what other people have created. Mm-hmm. It inspires me so much Yeah, just to like see just different get lost. pretty things. And do you guys travel a lot? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's like an event. Like we spoke in Poland. I did mm-hmm. like a, a big uh, sales event for like Mary Kay ladies. Oh, nice. But then we're like, I'm like, we are so going to Lake Como in between. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I, I just, I love like seeing culture mm-hmm. and experiencing food and, yeah. you know, I, I go in a different way home and, just yeah. being all adventurous and spontaneous. Yeah. yeah. Cause be, it, but at the same time, like, I'm like an organized weirdo freak, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's so good for your soul. Yeah. I can tell you're, yeah. like, um, you're very creative, but, like, kind of a planner and organized exactly. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. sometimes you got to, like, go to your creative personality and just go with the flow and, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. So you, do you, do you and Jake want kids? Can I ask that? Are you yeah. like, do you do eventually want yeah. kids? Nice. I think like one. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said that and it turned into four. You know what's so, oh God, really? <laughs> I literally was like, I had one. I'm like, I'll try, I'll have one more and then I'll be done. And it literally turned into four. Oh my so, God. But I started so young. I started at 24. So Wow. Yeah. But, oh my but God. But have one. One's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one you know, it's fun. so interesting because I feel so much purpose mm. through like changing yeah. lives. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never felt like, oh gosh, something yeah. is missing. Because I feel like I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. God. Like kids, I, I will tell you, kids will change you. Yeah. Like they just will. And I always, I feel like women feel like they need to choose. And I'm, I, I never wanted to follow that story or that narrative. And it's interesting because I always knew I wanted to be a mom. And I kind of felt like I got thrown, in, thrown into like being an entrepreneur because we lost everything in the market crash and all that. But I, d- I decided to not follow that narrative that I had to choose. And I was like, I want to be successful. I want to have purpose and I'm going to be a mom and I'm going to mm. do all of those things. So whenever I ask um, women, I'm like, do you want kids? You know, I, I don't know if it's yeah. like a, if it's, I'm like, can I ask you that? Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. will tell you, like, I, even though it's stressful, like, I love my baby. So yeah. I, whenever somebody's like, yeah, maybe one, I'm like, oh, good. They're so fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I mean, being being a mom and you can create balance, especially like you already have success. You've already kind of built your mm-hmm. brand, which mm-hmm. is like a great space where yeah. you can kind of just create your own boundaries and like do the mom thing and build your empire at the same right. time. So, right. But I love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being on the show thank today. You. I'm sure I'll get to know you more. I actually, it's so funny because like, I feel like I don't have time to be social. I know that sounds really bad. So I, get it. I, I like doing these podcasts because I feel like I get a new friend and I, I get, to, I get to know you more than I would just like going to coffee or something. Yeah. You know? So I, it's like, where else are you going to have an hour deep yeah. dive with someone? Yeah, exactly. And I do have to tell you, I'm proud of you for leaning in. And I, I no, feel, I feel like there's like a whole new level yeah. happening right now. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like I said, I've been feeling this slow, s- subtle nudge and I'm like, I don't typically reach out. Like it's out of my comfort zone, yeah. but I'm comfortable talking and training and speaking. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to accept this new calling and see yeah. where it takes me. And so yeah. thank you for being here oh and being gosh. open to it. And, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. Yay. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the big money stylist podcast here with Emily Ford. I'm so excited for the next chapter. Definitely check her out on Instagram, all of her programs. I stalked her for about an hour this morning and I was like, can I hire you? <laughs> so you guys tune into the big money stylist podcast every Tuesday and we'll see you guys next week.